message is basically, hey, really, let's focus on the customer. Let's let's we'll, we'll develop this unifying layer. We want. Let me ask you a question about this payment. So Lars is the CEO of SuccessTech. It's bought by SAP for $3.4 billion on the job for three months here. Um, is it culture shock? I mean, I was in the CEO interviews when you asked that question, and I was actually sitting next to him. So when I looked to the right, I heard Alex Williams. I asked, saw you ask the question. You didn't see this. I'm sharing this for the first time publicly. This is just the way this guy and he's kind of smirk and scared of Bill and Jim Schneider at that stage. Because what's happening, and my takeaway from that is, he's dropping a lot of these guys. This is SAP. It's a monster firm. He's been running Mach 100 in a startup. Yeah. Less than a billion dollars in billings. Yeah, exactly. Lean and mean, right. all cloud. Right. Do you, yeah, do you I, see it's that interesting way? to see, to, to be right next to when that question was being asked. Because, you know, he has a lot of uh, bravado. Um, but he is in a very much of a large, larger organization because now we're getting into the question of you can't just do that. How do you treat the channel with success factor? I asked him, I said, so Oh, yeah, yeah. What about services provided? Probably I think it's an education process. I think he's good for the company, but he's he's definitely going to take his knocks over the next. So basically, uh, six he's got to get acclimated in the environment. Yeah. He's going to probably get slapped around. And by the way, on your question, which was so good, you weaved in what about Cloud Foundry again? That was a different smirk. So he looked at the CEOs. You can almost see in real time. Yeah. Let's say if we talk about real time management, real analytics. What I heard McDermott say, Bill McDermott, was. He actually answered for him because yeah. I think he wanted to give him the right answer. Yeah, like, I think you know, so. Before you say something yeah. stupid or get it wrong, SAP's the brand, okay? So this is evolving in real time in front of our eyes. We're capturing right. it. Um, right. What else are you seeing with this? I mean, do you agree with that, that it's evolving? And totally. What the nuances are you learning? Totally evolving. I think some of the nuances that I'm learning is that everything is up for grabs. We really don't know what's going to happen to business by design. Um, we're told that some components might, you know, it might be broken up and that we will then, uh, it'll be then pushed into kind of this loosely coupled platform. We're also hearing that, you know, I think it's pretty much verified that Streamworks, uh, the uh, technology they've been developing over the past several years, uh, really activity stream technology, will become integrated with, uh, jam with uh, the uh, success factor jam technology. So. We're starting to see kind of where these technologies will fit, where they don't fit. The interesting thing is, and I think it really is important to focus on, is what is SAP's overall strategy as how this compares to mobile. And that's where I think we'll start to really see some real definition. They are getting better with the developer communities. They're, they, they, they still need to do a lot of work. They admit that. But I think that's going to be where we're going to start to see really where these intersections really matter with what Lars is talking about with success factors. I, I, want to, I want to stay on success factors if we can for a moment. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but I've talked to some other customers here today. And, and I'm of the opinion that there's a little bit of smoke and mirrors going on here. So, I mean, the success factor is obviously a great story. Um, I've said before, it's really focused on the talent side. Um, we saw Lars bring out uh, essentially what I consider a screenshot of Employee Central. Right. I mean, that's what it was. It didn't look as nearly as mature. I mean, it's hard to tell from a, a graphic. But in talking to other people, other customers who have experience with success factors, that's the new kid on the block, you know, the employee central. Right. So essentially, you've got the core SAP, HR, which is, I think, staying right there. Right. Employee central is the way in which they're going to compete more broadly with, for example, Workday, right. which is a much more built out core HR right. and as well has the talent management. I think that you know that's going to be a real challenge for them. At the same time, success factors and Lars, you know, in particular give them a cloud strategy, a cloud play. It, um, um, I think it's a good move that they invested 3.4 right. billion. I think it's better than and than, than R&D investment sometimes. And so so that gets them in. I think they're going to sell a lot of it to their existing customers. You know, the big question is can they broaden that out? And, and will a company like Workday, when it does its IPO, become the next new hot company and create problems for success factors? That's, that's going to be really interesting to watch. I think, they've, I think SAP has the advantage of the mobile emphasis, but I think that 
you know, the, the clean sheet of paper built from the ground up for the cloud, you know, has some advantages as well. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree, you know, with the competitive landscape. The Workday is a charging horse. Uh, they're going for an IPO. They're very good at mobile app development. They, um, they, they're they going after the core of SAP. SAP, on, you know, on the other hand, with success factors, is really trying to delineate success factors, understanding the difference between it and their apps, their core and edge apps, which were developed on platform environments. So you have all those line of business apps that you see you know, develop off the Java pass and the, and the ABAP pass. And then you also have then you know, success factors. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. Like, you can align those, but the people who are the, the, the SAP mentors who I talk to say that there's an issue with, potentially an issue with extensions and like how you actually develop the applications off of that if those architectures are so different. So I think they, they have uh, some architectural challenges to face. Uh, but I think it's still to be determined what that. Uh, well, what I talked to I talked to another customer today, and I won't name them because they asked me not to. Um, but they said, "Yeah, you know what? We we deinstalled Success Factors. We brought in Workday. It's way simpler." Now that struck me hmm. as, "Huh, Success Factors? Maybe maybe there's a a commonality yeah. in the approach." You know, SAP is big and functional. They're going to make this work. Yeah, yeah I think that's true. Well, let's talk about that for a second. So the, the companies that do really well with acquisitions, obviously IBM and Oracle, and you mentioned EMC. I think VMware is kind of a mixed track record, Zimbra, but but some others that you know might work pretty well. But but clearly EMC is good too. How would you grade SAP in terms of its ability to integrate its acquisitions? Oh, I think that they they're getting there. I think the success factors acquisition was a smart one. I think if you look at it from a technology perspective, uh, they've been developing basically their own cloud services on a uh, on a job environment and. Success Factors is also a job environment, and so they have a light platform there. I don't think it'll be overly complex to kind of to right. bring those two together. I think it'll be more complex in terms of the business challenges that are faced. I think one thing Lars can do for the company is he can help them relaunch essentially what what he calls were like this terrible product to a terrible launch even themselves when they were first put out. He can really kind of, well, he talks a lot about um, the uh, you know, explaining what the product is, what are its benefits, like why, why do customers use this? And he said, because you, what you saw was this is by design, was like actually some, there's a lot of customers out there who actually did use it. So I think it's a little early to say whether this is a, you know, a, a, a box acquisition or not. No, no, that, that, so that's not, that's not my point. My point is, if you look back at some of the acquisitions, you know, how, how, yeah, how have they done? So business objects, side, side things. Yeah, 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 no, it's still well, I think so side tomorrow, base, tomorrow now. I think Sidebase is only just starting to come so together. So Sidebase just came together. Sidebase is great. So Sidebase is taking them a while to get this thing in place. But, 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 but Sidebase, you know, the piece that's about Sidebase is that it's really mobile. Right. And so they've got to sort of do the, the pivot data to mobile. Engine. How about tomorrow now? I mean, that was, you know, Basically, a disaster. Right? <laughs> I don't know. You, know. you can sort of blame that one on, on, on Apotheker, I guess, right? Wasn't wasn't that new? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Business objects. I mean, what's your? What, how would you grade business objects? I, you know, I think that's another question. I think for the like, a, you know, it really comes from another an, an, another age, really, right. of, so of my the point, on promise on my premise point. world. This this management team has to show. I, I, they've impressed me with their vision and their ability to act on that vision and message that vision. I think they've got to demonstrate that they can do well with acquisitions. I think John's point about Sybase being a good move, I would agree with you. Uh, it did take a long time, but I still think it's you know gotten them into mobile in a big way. And I think the success factors it gets them into cloud, and that's a strategic imperative for these guys. I think it is, yeah. So, I think you know, very much. Jury's so. still out, but they, they've got a lot to prove. Alex, what right. are you hearing on the trenches? Okay, you're out there, you're in the, you're in the meetings. What are you hearing from the other bloggers, um, other analysts? 
um, the mentors. She has a lot of social media going on out there. Which I think it's like an own internal uh, social media. What do you hear out there? What's well, the general buzz? Paul Wilson. Well, one of the most interesting conversations I had last night of course, at the bar, was about uh, Bluefin Solutions with, Blue, with, a, with a, one of the chief technical architects for Bluefin Solutions. And Bluefin Solutions is a services provider based out of the UK, and they're one of the leading kind of integrators for SAP Innovative Technology. And this guy really knew, knows SAP HANA back and forth. And I, this was backed up by what kind of another conversation I had with some Fujitsu executives. That essentially what we're looking at here is – SAP HANA really kind of focuses on the, 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 the kind of the legacy uh, business intelligence data warehouse technology out there, and that that you can bring you can bring HANA you can bring HANA in. Now it's still you know we're still seeing it in kind of in, you know in smaller clusters of um, two, four, sixteen nodes, as the guy, the guy was explaining to us last night. But they are so we are starting to see where SAP is starting to to, to test out um, uh, in memory platforms with. Uh, with 100 terabytes of data. Now that is a tremendous amount of data right there. The question though becomes, can this can, can the technology really scale across the marketplace because there's a factor of virtualization? Well, the, 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 the technical architects of Lupin basically told me that we can virtualize the data warehouse technology and then push the data into, uh, into HANA. So those are two different, so those are some interesting kind of dynamics there. So. That, that I think HANA really, you know, represents the future now. The, the concern that I think some people have that I've talked to is there's this kind of, again, this division between how HANA apps are developed in the cloud versus how the SAP has been developing apps in the cloud. And yeah, success factors over here. HANA will have to be that underlying layer, but we'll have to look at how those apps are configured within HANA. So I think... It really seems like the customers are really excited about what HANA can do. What do you think about uh, Jim Cannavo's uh, comments regarding is HANA really, he, he made most of the comments in the keynote and his one-on-one with the with us, that uh, am I going to ask my wife to think it's a real thing now, or is this kind of nuanced gestures around, it's real, but bringing up all their customers, which has been a great thing for me today. Yeah. Um, so obviously, a little bit seems insecure about the fact that, hey, you know, trust me, it's real. Have you ever identified this? Um, one, do you agree with that? And what's your take on that? And the second question was one of developers. You mentioned this in, uh, in our one on one with them here during the QA that they want to get a million new developers out of the SAP platform. So those are two questions that I want you to respond to. Sure. There are some that we just threw out there today. Sure. So, first off, about is it real? Is, you know, is, is Han real? Uh, yeah, it, it, it is definitely real. And the Again, the, the people who I am talking to saying it's a good thing to play, and it really is a direct threat to uh, people at home, undoubtedly. And you kind of and look at it from this perspective in terms of licensing issue, right? SAP is um, IBM's biggest customer. I mean, Oracle's biggest customer. So when you and when you and traditionally have like the you know. Um, you know, develop a data warehouse or, or some, uh, you know, or, or as they, you know, put in some enterprise SAP technology, you pair it with the, with the Oracle database. Well, the opportunity here is to replace, is to put that SAP HANA database next to the, next to the Oracle environment, and if you can replace it, then you don't have to pay that 12% tax anymore, okay? So that, that, that's, that's, that's a real critical factor there, is actually just the cost and the performance itself. They need to do some, they, they do need to uh, work on, they, I have talked to people and they know that they have to work on some things. For instance, they have to need to work more on the data visualization because you need to be able to look at this data in a whole different way. You gotta make that data available uh, on tablets. Again, the mobile question become, becomes an issue. So those factors are, you know, are, are there and present, but overall, um, there is adoption for the technology, and there is merit to what I w- to what S- SAP says when they say that they can uh, be the number two database vendor. I think there, that I think it's a uh, you know it's a possibility. What do you think about the um, comments around the performance of SAP? Jim was going to mention, you know, we tried to address the four quarters. Are you getting a feeling that that's a that's like a Analytics, you've got the kind of three 
what is the next game we're going to do to grow? Okay, got that. He gave the baby stuff. So, a format. Do you think FAQ cannibalizing their own business to set up for the future? I mean, and I, wanted, I was going to bring this up in a, in a second topic that we came on the queue, and I wanted to suggest it. Look what Steve Jobs did in Apple. He blew up a very successful iPod baby to introduce a phone, uh, right? And that changed the world. Essentially, uh, they could kill, literally, not just kill, blow up a franchise that people love. Right. Music. Right. right. I mean, music is important. Right, right. And then the rest of history, right? right. So we see that. Right. I think in a way, is in a similar situation where they're, you haven't really publicly said it yet, but you have to kind of blow up. Uh, 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 they got to blow up something because they have to commit to you over the years. But, you know, in my own business school, the old joke was, cannibalize your own business and I'll start. So I get the sense that's going on here. Yeah. And I'm not seeing them as different. I had a, uh, I actually just got uh, from the airport over here uh, Sunday, and I uh, had, like, uh, the, like, the security guy with a financial analyst who, who actually talks about the future being a part of it. Said that there's going to be a considerable fall off of the market now, but there may be potentially kind of a real bubble um, inside the sales, inside the sales organization versus the regional group and the industry group. And the regional group is starting to win that power. And the industry group revolted, and that resulted in kind of like this uh, gap in power, right? They say that, you know, he said that it's his group that they neglected, they, they kind of cleared house to some extent. Um, but I think it's like that with the United Arab Emirates right now. It's tough to do, but I, but it, you know, again, I think it comes back to it's a lot easier to do it this year than it was two years ago. And I came to Sapphire by about two years ago. There was a lot of tension going on. You know, there was like, yeah, the cloud, it's, uh, you know, it's cool. Yeah, big data, we really don't like that. You know, like, yeah, but, you know, we've got to go on and talk about it. It's still so very important. Next year was less than that. But if you were to win the same way you did in uh, Boston last fall, there was like this, you could tell there was so much uncertainty inside SAP. And they did not want, they do not want to give up their power. So, yeah, so they do have to, they almost have to come in and go, you know, and, and, and blow it up. But I think here at this event, we're seeing that basically the market has accepted the fact that the cloud is IT, right? I mean, there's no question about it anymore. Come on. And, and so, and so now SAP. Are, are yeah. Obvious. So now SAP can go out and say, yeah, we're all about the cloud. Woo! But now, give me get back to this developer question, right? Because yeah. I think this all ties in pretty directly. Because now, if you do have all the cloud and you have the ability to to run your IT on a mobile uh, on a mobile device, then what do you do? You know, well, you need developers for that. And so I think that's really the, the it is the next big challenge for SAP. They're going to have to learn how to almost again blow up their kind of engineering community in, internally. And I think that's a role that Lars can play. He can say, yeah. "We got to blow this. We got to blow this up. We got to like take this to a whole new level." Okay. And so he's got I, that mojo. He's got the swagger. Yeah. And you almost see like Shinabe and McDermott being his older brother. Right. You know, like okay, hey, just calm down. You know. He's yeah. Like, well, you know, then get unleashed. So interesting tension. Yeah. In the <laughs> yeah, really um, interesting. It's, it's, but I don't see it dysfunctional yet. No, you know I mean? no, I don't see it dysfunctional. At all. I actually think it's very innovative what they're doing, and I think that they're kind of like they're they're treading on ground that I don't see really IBM treading on. I don't see HP treading on this ground. I don't, you know. Hey, when you're moving fast and making change like you know, SAP, you're about to hit some speed bumps. But I like like Sidebase, same kind of tension. They're making bold moves, okay, and and I think. The M and A will continue for SAP. They have to, because I think they're on a growth path right now that might be unprecedented in their history. If Honda continues to track with the traction it has, and I'm still yet to hear the massive number of de nodes under deployment, but from our research that we've been doing and kind of you know, unscientific polling, this general traction, the there in is. memory is a serious sleeper because Honda is. Uh, Paso's little project, step one through four of this big re revitalization transformation of SAP, is the in memory is a secret weapon. I mean, everything that we've, we've been covering on the Cube and Silicon Angle has been around fusion IO, BioLink, EMC, making storage low latency. This in memory component is a critical linchpin of the architecture. Yes. And no one's talking about that. So yeah. it's like the hidden little secret sleeper. I mean, yeah. they're talking about it, but it's not, they don't have a story for it. I mean, you know, it's real time, but I don't see them wanting that. So, yeah. Well, I, mean, I think they, I think, you know, I, I think 
Sell this product better. We gotta like get out there. We can't just talk about how, how you know the the you know the nuances of its architecture. We need to sell it. <laughs> we need to market it. You know, and so I think you know, and and, and so that says a lot. What you say is like in, you know, is in memory kind of like this hidden gem. Yeah, it is hidden, but it can't be hidden. You got to take that thing out and show it to the world. Well, but, you know, SAP executives. I, you know, I'm getting to like SAP more and more as we sit down with them here inside the cube because they have an air, an, uh, an air of um, cockiness, but competitiveness. But they're fun spirited. They okay? are. But one thing that's clear: they are performance driven. Yeah. They are all about winning. And yeah. You see that from clearly. You made references to basketball and sports, and you got Schnabel, the intellect, who's a product guy. Who's got an incredible vision, and, and he he appeals to me, okay? Because he talks about things that I care about, talking about the intelligent network around business. And Dave, this is stuff that we talk about internally at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE Labs is things like predictive analytics. That I think they are tracking right on the right path for a company as big as SAP. They are right on the fault line of innovation, and they continue to play on that fault line when you know these season, the seismic shifts happen. They're going to be capitalized on it. So. Again, positive signs all around for me on this show so far. Yeah. Um, and what's even more impressive is their focus of innovation around investment. So the startup money that's going to be flowing in from SAP Ventures and also the SAP kind of incubator in Palo Alto. I'm going to go check that place out. Yeah. Um, first of all, we should have a cube gig up. We should have a cube spot up there. But yeah. that's a whole other story. Um, so that's one thing. So the things that I'm disappointed with from on this show, Dave and, and Alex, is the lack of traction on – um, the app store, the apps. Mm -hmm. Now, the ecosystem, I've seen some great uh, examples. Alex, you and I were in San Francisco for the, um, we saw, what were those companies we saw? Um, we saw Adobe, right? Sensha, we saw um, Accelerator, Phone ga Gap, Phone Gap, Accelerator. Yeah, those, those are, this is bright spots in, in they, there. They bought Cyclo. Which so is there's, there's movement the there, but I don't think the world has crossed over to the concept that there's an enterprise app store in business. It's just now emerging. So I just, I'm not seeing the uptake on that. Well, it's kind yeah. of ecosystem funding that's required. I just don't, I just don't see it. It's not impressive yet. Well, the, 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 there, there's not that capability to just kind of like roll apps off the factory floor, which I really think you need to do with if you're going to have a mobile strategy. You need to just roll them off. They need to almost be like social objects that are just like going, like just like keep on throwing them out there, like on oh, a conveyor line. Pick it up, put it in the market, pick it up for the market, like boom, 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 boom. We, we don't have that yet. What I think is part of the problem, though, is with the is is with the mobile platforms themselves. In the you know we have they're so reliant on iOS right now uh, because Android platform is so ent entirely fragmented and it really is troublesome to develop on. And Windows 8 is really still kind of a you know it, it is out there. We don't really know what it is. And but what I'm hearing, for instance, from people, um, Philippe Winthrop of the Enterprise Mobility Foundation, he says that he's starting to see some more pickup around around Windows 8. There's more interest in it, and I think that'll be kind of. I think there's going to be some inflection points. I think one of those inflection points maybe see how rapidly Windows 8 does get accepted into the market. Yeah. The other thing I, I heard about here, but didn't hear a lot about in terms of success points or proof points, was the personalization. So. Analytics, real time, they're banging that theme home. Not a lot of proof points on the personalization. So, to me, they're still in proof of concept mode. Obviously, this Sapphire, they're rolling out more customers. Um, any feedback on that that you heard in the trenches around it? The fact that a lot of customers are talking. What customers are saying? Yeah, just in general, the vibe. I mean, I'm hearing, you know, loosely from people, oh, it's great that they're parading customers because. It's validation. Are you hearing the same thing? Yeah, I, I do, and I think they actually did a very good job of how they uh, handled uh, uh, their customer uh, uh, sessions yesterday, especially with Bill McDermott in the talk show format that they did. They were actually able to kind of clearly articulate what 
they are trying to do. And, and I think then Schnabe did a good job of kind of bringing it back home today. When he was starting to talk about, you know, he went through this whole kind of evolution of where we are today. It's like, you know, we went from like uh, um, the, you know, the punch card, you know, to this point in time where like we have more, you know, mobile devices than, than people on the planet. And to another point where actually it's the data that people are generating that's going to make the biggest difference of all. Because for the first time, people are generating unbelievable amounts of data. I mean, you guys have kids, right? I mean, how how many how many updates has data my da has my daughter sheet. made to te to to her text message to Twitter Todd, to Facebook? Todd Papiano at Counter Continuity coined the term social exhaust as data. The social exhaust meaning stuff we're exhausting yeah. out of our interactions. Loose data kind of floating around out there being harnessed for big data. So I think, you know, this is a big data show. I mean, these guys to me, Alex, are a big data company, but not a lot of big data. This is our, like a, not a lot of big data washing, as we say. Right. So, but so we are showing big data. So I think the connection is with what Shinabe said today, and what Shinabe said today. He said the, gem, the the amount of data that we're generating is turning supply chains upside down because we don't because now people are generating so much more information that it's kind of putting everything into kind of a whole different kind of realm where it's not. You know, when, as they said yesterday, um, English was language you needed to really succeed in this world when you were, gro you know, growing up and, you know, of, 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 our, of our generation and our parents' generation. But now then the genera we're entering a generation where social is the language of commerce, really, essentially. And that will then really, and that's really what I think was most interesting about the the customers that they had yesterday because what they said was you can turn that chaos into optimization you can optimize that chaos and you can make it even you can make your actually business far more efficient and we know that you know we know that in following all these all, all this stuff there's incredible efficiencies with the automation okay I want to reset and let people know you're watching siliconangle.com footage and coverage of SAP Sapphire now in Orlando Florida I'm John Furrier I'm here with Alex Williams and Dave Vellante and we are bringing you action from the tech event here as the tech world is colliding with the business world and the enterprise. And this week, Facebook's going to go public. A lot of stuff happening in tech. Huge shifts. If you're under the age of 30, you don't know what we've seen. And that is, is that we're seeing a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity around an inflection point in technology where technology is now part of our culture on the consumer side and continuing to grow rapidly, but changing business. I mean, it's not too long ago when I was in college and graduated from college, we didn't have cell phones. I mean, can you imagine the day where there was no cell phones? No phones, no mobile phones at all. Imagine the day where there was no internet. Yeah. This is what's happening to business. The businesses that are out there today are still architected on those days of big, big computers in the back office, no phones. That's changing. People are modernizing their business. It's gonna change how we work, how we play. And I think that's the key to the point that SAP is aligning with. You're watching SiliconAngle.tv. SiliconAngle.com is the tech reference point for innovation. If you want news, go to other sites. If you want to know what it means, follow SiliconAngle.com or Gibbon.org. We'll tell you what it means. We'll tell you what to follow. We use predictive analytics to, to figure out what's trending and write about it. So if you want to be informed, you want to be ahead of the curve, follow SiliconAngle.com. So where are we going to be over the next few weeks? This is the beginning of the summer tour. We have uh, next week, we're going to be at EMC World in Las Vegas. Right. We're also going to have H Base Conference in right. San Francisco. That's where I'm going to be with Matt Weinberger and you. We right. have a little, it's sold out. I got to talk to you about that because they're like, they want to cut us off on passive, but we're going to be all there in force. Okay. Um, but H Base is an interesting conference because it's a one day event. It's kind of like the inner circle of the open source community, and they're probably one of the most explosive scenes right now in tech. Okay. If you're not familiar with HBase out there, guys, go register for that conference, or actually you can't go watch it online, watch the cube. It's completely sold out. Again, yeah. um, anything Cloudera is doing is, is just phenomenal. Uh, after that, we have IBM Edge. Right. HP Discover. Right. Um, what, what else do we have that? What else yeah. after HP Discover? We have we such have a busy a schedule. Google I.O., a bunch of events. So Edge. IBM Edge. Dell Storage Forum. Dell Storage Forum. Um, Google I.O. We're going to try to do a little gate crash there. We'll be at, we'll be at VMware. Uh, VMware. VMworld. In yeah, August. In August, VMworld. Right. Back in the Moscone, which I'm very excited about. Yep. Even though it's 
couple hours further in the plane, I'd much prefer to be in San Francisco than Vegas. Dan, as we easier. wind down, what's your final parting thoughts for today? Well, I think that um, we heard McDermott set it up yesterday and give the high-level messaging. You were saying he, you know, maybe looks a little tired, but I think that he, they're, they're both the CEOs are very credible. They're yeah. confident, and that's coming across uh, despite some of the bumps in the road, you know, financial results and so forth. I think they're steering the ship in the right direction, and that direction is cloud, mobile. They're injecting social. They're talking analytics. They don't talk a lot about big data, but you know what? They're talking about analytics, and, and I think that's a great big data play. I think the big challenge is, you know, their 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 past is like a boat anchor that is that is slowing them down, yeah. and that's going to be their challenge. You know, and they're they're fighting a multi front war. But what know, is but but what is success to I think in terms of an example of a large organization that really has said we are gonna innovate. Yeah, and, and, and we're gonna take that innovation and I love level. that. I, I love that. the fact that they are yeah. making some bold decisions. I think they um, are trying, John, not to cannibalize their young too fast. Uh, but it's em it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. The the the, fa the faster they rip off that band aid, the sooner they're gonna be on that growth trajectory. Uh, even though they're growing pretty well, but a lot of that comes from you know their traditional maintenance business just kicking along. Um, but I think they're they're really finally making the moves. Um, the Sybase move was I think big. The, the the success factors move was big. They're filling in with some major acquisitions, and now really they got a lot, they got the pieces in place. They really do just got to you know pull it off and compete in the marketplace. I think they'll they'll do well, and here's why: this customer base is starved innovation they they're are, starved they for are. cool technology good, good, good point you know and so and i think they'll eat it up i think they will and i and i think they'll look at and i think they'll increasingly look at oracle and exologic and say wait a second they've just pieced together you know uh they've pieced together technology over the past 10 years there's nothing really truly innovative about it is but sap hana different story different story built from the ground up really core technology i'm i'm really interested